so far we have become quite accustomed to and are very comfortable with the understanding of QS provisioning architecture in NGN, specifically the role of the uh, transport stratum and the service stratum, namely the RSCF with its own functional entities and the service control function in the uh, services stratum. But as we know that the uh, services are provided end to end and beyond doubt, um, Ethernet is a very widely adopted uh, layer 2 technology on the access side. So NGN actually adopts Ethernet both at the core as well as on the access side, uh, we know the um, carrier grade Ethernet. So it is important to understand how uh, Ethernet plays an ever increasing role in NGN architecture, then we need to look at the requirements which consequently emerge. Now, we know that Ethernet is widely adopted as the access technology for the corporate customers as well as the residential users. It goes much beyond the core networks um, from the access side such as the Metro Ethernet, which is a carrier grade Ethernet. Quality of service is usually adopted in the Ethernet through the incorporation of uh, a VLAN tagging protocol known as 802.1Q. Now, with the provisioning of 802.1Q, there's a whole list of requirements which are going to now accompany the quality of service provisioning mechanism through the tagging. Let's look at the overall generic architecture for Ethernet based NGNs because no doubt Ethernet is not going anywhere anytime soon and we need to understand the importance of Ethernet from the access side as well as the core side. So you see here that uh, the customer premises network whether corporate as in business, residential and uh, even the mobile broadband networks are connected to the Ethernet network. The Ethernet network both on the access side and the core side are required to ensure quality of service mechanisms from the voice over IP, IPTV and other interactive uh, multimedia traffic uh, flows. So we are now going to look at the functional requirements. The first and foremost thing is that some kind of uh, quality of service solicitation or requesting mechanisms should be provided to the end user uh, which on the basis of a pre-configured service level agreement requests the quality of service for a certain flow. Correspondingly, the network side has to incorporate certain functionality to ensure that the end user in an end-to-end -end, uh, connection is able to receive the services not only from the access side also from the core side. So the network side needs operation, administration and maintenance, uh, some kind of load balancing and load sharing mechanism because it may not be directly related to quality of service provisioning but the QoS can certainly degrade if the uh, load is not uh, balanced or shared properly then in the wake of a failure, some kind of protection, port isolation and restoration mechanism should also be provided. Then um, we know that uh, Ethernet is on the access side and it does not really bother about the virtual private networks, which is more of a router based mechanism. So it means now that we are considering uh, NGN uh, which is Ethernet based and we are looking at the quality of service aspects. So VPN support also has to be provided. And then we know that uh, uh, VLANs are restricted to um, uh, uh, only the access side switches. But if we are considering the incorporation of uh, Ethernet in the core, so VLAN mechanisms have to be extended to the core side as well. So some kind of uh, discovery mechanism has to be provided across the uh, core and access boundaries. So some auto configuration mechanism also has to be incorporated. Then the quality of service requirements have to be mapped 
to and fro between the core and the axis sides. And once the QoS mechanism is in place, so some kind of traffic management as in uh, queuing and scheduling um, has to be incorporated. 